All praise and glory and honor be to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I like that scripture. Say, said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus said to the Pharisees, to the Jews, he said, if you don't praise me, these rocks will cry out. And I know God could have literally made the rocks praise him. Amen. Even the planets praise him. They say there's music in heaven. And there's worship. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer and let's just worship God tonight and just release ourselves to him and enter into his presence. How many believe we can do that? Hallelujah. Father, we love you tonight. We praise you. We exalt you, Lord. You have been good to us and you are good to us. God, we as a people here tonight, we say we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. We need you. We think of you, Lord. Even minutes, every minute sometimes we think about you. We think about you and your goodness. So we just ask that you come in here tonight and you touch us, that we're not the same when we leave. And Lord, that you would touch every need of every person. Devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You will take your hands off God's people. You will loose God's people. You will go. Sickness and disease, you will go. In Jesus' name, I speak to those mountains and I command them to go. In Jesus' name, Lord, we commit this service to you. We just ask that you have your way in here tonight and we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name. Now just raise your hand and say, I come to praise the Lord. Could we stand up if you can?
tell it all.
that third verse again. Somebody obey the Lord. I say lift up your heads tonight as an expression of victory. Do not be cast down, for you will never be forsaken. You will never be left alone. You will never be left without my presence. Lift up your heads and rejoice, for I am the mighty king. I am the mighty deliverer. I am the mighty provider. I am the mighty savior. I am the mighty healer. I am the mighty, I say again, provider. 
So lift up your head and rejoice in my presence, saith the Lord. For I have great peace for you. I have great joy for you. I have victory for you. Rejoice in my presence. Rejoice with singing. Rejoice with gladness in your heart. For I have paid a great price for you, and I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you, and I will provide for you, saith the Lord. Trust me. Trust me in the middle of the storm. For your house shall not fall. Your house shall not fail. For it is built on the revelation of who I am. And on my word, saith the Lord. So rejoice in me tonight. And know that you are more than a conqueror in me, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I feel to do that song again.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's a universal language. It's the same in every language. Interesting thing in Vietnamese. In Vietnamese, the name for Jesus in Vietnamese is Yeshua. Whew. Now, how did that happen? You say, what is Yeshua? Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, fill our thirsty soul. Fill us, Lord. We're thirsty. We're thirsty for you, Lord. We're thirsty for you. Can't nobody fill us but you, Lord. Can't nobody heal us but you, Lord. 
Can't nobody touch us but you, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me to overflowing. I dare you to tell him that. Feel me to overflowing, Lord. Oh, Lord, let a mighty river flow through my soul. Let my heart be touched with your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, Crowneth thy life with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're the true and the living God. You're the God that answers by fire. Oh, you're the God that renews our strength. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We honor you tonight, oh God. Father God, Father God, we honor you. We bless you. We call for you, Lord, to touch us. We call for you, Lord, to touch us tonight. We are a people that came for a blessing from you tonight, Lord. That blessing is your presence. For in your presence is the fullness of joy. In your presence there is peace. In your presence, there is healing. In your presence, there is strength. In your presence, there is deliverance. In your presence, there is faith. <laughs> Woo, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes! Oh, with a loud voice they praise him. With a loud voice they praise him. With a loud voice they praise him. They praise him with the string instruments. They praise him with a the piano. They praise him with the drums. They praise him with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 What a mighty God we serve! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! The God that never forgets. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. 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 We call for you to come, Lord. We call for you to come. We desire you. We desire you. We love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless you. We bless you. You are everything, Lord. 
<laughs> You're our Alpha. You are Omega. Woo!
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pain is leaving somebody's body. Let's sing that again, if you will. And as loud as you want to say it to him, say it to him. I know some of us can get pretty loud in the house sometimes. Oh, hallelujah. Why not get loud in the church house? Just love on him. Just love on him. Just love on him. I, I feel him reciprocating to me. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was tired when I came in here tonight. But I feel like a teenager right now. I feel like I could run through a troop and jump over a wall. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, we exalt you, Lord. Well, you're the blesser of our soul. I'm praying that we get a revelation tonight of how much he loves us. I'm praying we get a revelation tonight of how much he loves us. I can tell you everyone in here loves him. Woo! Yes! Somebody say yes! Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. You come and got us, Lord. We were in trouble. We were lost. We were tormented. We were blinded. <laughs> you came in our mess and you got us. We love you. You're our God. You're our Redeemer. Oh, you're the love of our soul. We bless you. Answer by fire tonight, Lord. Fire of the Holy Spirit fall on us. Fire of the Holy Spirit fall on us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We love you. We honor you. We need you. We desire you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, you said, Lord, if any man thirst, let him come unto you and drink. We come unto you, Lord, we're drinking. You said, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, Lord, you said, seek me and I will be found. You said, call unto me and I will answer thee. Oh, we're calling, Lord. We're asking for you to come. We're asking for you to touch us. We're asking for you, to Lord, to love on us. We're asking for you, Lord, to play with your children tonight. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ain't nobody like you, Lord. You're the lifter of our head. <laughs> no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. We look up, Lord, because our help comes from above. Mm. Whatever you feel. <laughs> Woo! Just worship Him.
you that's in pain, I want you to come up here. I want to pray for you. You're in pain right now. Thank you. 
Glory. You know, somebody's had a foot problem. You didn't know you had a problem when you was younger. But you've, you've had a, it was a birth defect. And the older you've got, the more it's bothered you on your, in, 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 on your foot, in the foot itself. And the Lord is healing you right now. Start that over because someone didn't hear the first part. The, 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 somebody's had a birth defect in your foot. Never really bothered you when you was younger, but it's beginning to bother you. And the Lord is touching that and healing that right now. In your foot. In your foot. Hallelujah. A defect. There's been pain. Oh, at different times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's had a problem with hearing, and 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 it's it's really troubled you. You you're not used to that. The Lord is touching you right now. Praise God. They better be careful what they say in the house because you're going to hear it. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. It's been like a ringing in years, and years has stopped being loosed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Marquita, I feel like we need to pray for you. I looked up there a while ago. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you have been harder to do your job than it used to be? I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It used to be easy, but it's got harder physically. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe the Lord Jesus loves us? How many believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Lord, we pray for those on the internet right now. I pray you touch them right now during this service. That you would touch and give them miracles, Lord. You'd release healing into their bodies. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I pray that you renew every part in this body, that you'd renew her strength like an eagle. Oh God, you would put healing in this body. God, that she'd be able to work without pain, without discomfort. I pray in Jesus' name. Heal her right now, I pray, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you clean houses? Come on right up here. I want to pray for y'all. If you clean houses, I want to pray for y'all first. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, touch Betty. Renew her strength. Oh, Lord, like a young woman, like a, oh, Lord, like an eagle. Renew her strength like an eagle. Hallelujah. Give her the strength of a young person, how she was when she was a teenager, early 20s. God, renew her strength. Do it for Marquita. Do it for Betty, I pray, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, renew Teresa's strength. God, touch her body. Touch every part of her body. Everything that's aching and hurting, I pray it stop right now. I pray that you'd renew her strength, Lord. Oh, God, let her be stronger than she was when she's a young woman. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't y'all get insulted. <laughs> You're going to be like an eagle, like a young eagle. Woo, hallelujah. Touch, touch, touch. Lord, renew Christy's strength. Lord, renew her strength like an eagle. Glory to God. You can do it. I know you can do it. Hallelujah. Strengthen her body. Take the pain out of her body. 
Heal their legs. Heal their legs. Oh, Lord, heal their knees. Heal them. Up and down their body. Hallelujah. Let it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Let the power of God touch them. Woo. Jesus. Let the power of God touch them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, renew her strength. Lord is an eagle. Lord, renew her strength. Give her strength in her body. God, the things that she has to do, Lord, let her do them with great ease and strength. Hallelujah. Father, the things that hope needs to do. God, I pray that you'd touch her right now. I pray that you'd give her strength. Oh, Lord God, that you'd renew her strength right now. Lord, that it would be easy like it used to be to do what she does. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, renew her strength. Renew her strength. Lord God, touch every joint in her body. Give her great strength, great energy. Give them all great energy, great energy. Lord Jesus, great energy, great strength to do their jobs, Lord. Hallelujah, I pray in Jesus' name. Woo! Who is in this line? <laughs> okay, I'm going to get Patty. Hallelujah. Give her strength. Give her strength. Give her strength. Lord God, let nothing be a chore. Let nothing be hard for her. Give her strength. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! Give Patty strength, Lord, on her job. Give her strength. Give her strength at home. Just give her strength. Renew her strength, I pray, Father. Oh, God. Oh, make her strong in her body. Let her have energy, Lord. Hallelujah. Let her have energy. Let this sluggishness leave all of them. Yes, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Let them be like a live wire, Lord, when they get out of bed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, Lord, renew her strength. Touch her tonight. Let the power of God come on her, Lord. Give her strength in her body. Yes, give her energy. Give her energy. Hallelujah. Lord, take the sluggishness away. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, let her body be strong and powerful. Yes, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Huh? She, she, you. Yeah. Lord, let her strength be renewed like an eagle. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, give her great energy. Give her great stamina. Glory to God. Just let blood flow in the, yeah, yeah, all in these legs and all up and down. Lord God, strengthen our body. God, in Jesus' name, no more struggle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Just touch people on the Internet right now, Lord. Let strength come in their bodies. Let blood begin to flow in arteries. Oh, God. Neuropathy. 
Lord, it'd be healed right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God that the pain would leave. Hallelujah. And these nerve endings would come alive, Father. In Jesus' name. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Joy, are you ready to sing while they're praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If y'all don't go to sleep on me, I'm going to preach in a few minutes. How many promise they won't go to sleep on me? <laughs> I can promise you you won't either. <laughs> How about fixing this? Hallelujah. How many has had pain leave their body? Raise your hand real high. If you've had pain, leave your body. Praise God. Just wave at him and say, Lord, you're so marvelous. You're so wonderful. This pain's never coming back. This condition's never coming back. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a bunch of people. Thank you, Lord.
somebody's just really been having cramps in your legs, the Lord is healing you. Go! Go, cramps. Don't ever come back in Jesus' name. Go! In Jesus' name. Cramps, go! In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Point at him and say, It's done in Jesus' name. Cramps, you're gone. You will not come back. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we have some ushers, please? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We was talking at the table today eating about a word of knowledge Jeanette got several years ago. I can't tell you what it was. It was the most awesome thing. They're talking about it today. God, Lord, thank you for manifesting your gifts here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Ronnie, would you pray some? Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 11, this is when Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem, Passion Week. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. He went to the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the evening tide was come, he went into Bethany with the twelve, which is on the Mount of Olives. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. That's actually talking about the second coming there. That's when the fig tree Israel is going to represent. Recognize the Messiah. But this fig tree is, a ty- is also a type of the religious system at that time. I want you to notice this. For the times of the figs was not yet, and Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and should not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. 
And he taught them, saying unto them, it is, it, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out, in, out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou curseth is withered. withered. And the Lord was talking to me at 5 o'clock this morning. I just got up and began to write. The house of worship and the house of prayer had lost its identity. It had lost its identity. When someone or some group loses its purpose, it loses its identity. It loses its power. It loses its authority. It loses its faith. It is something that no longer gives, but it takes. It steals from people. When God created something and gave it a purpose and it ceases to fulfill that purpose, it no longer is giving, it's taking. It steals. It takes away the influence of faith. It takes away power. It takes away authority. It takes away relationship with God. That's where these people were at this time. It becomes a human-run system called religion. Hmm. Dry, dead, no life. That's where this system was right here. Jesus cursed that system and said it'll never bear fruit again. That, that tree represented that system that had ceased to be effective, that had lost its identity, had lost its purpose. That is a form without power. You know, the Bible says in the last days there shall be, people shall have a form. They, 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 they'll, they'll have a, like a godliness with no power. Hallelujah. When you lose faith, you lose power. You lose your authority. You, you lose your revelation of that. You become a part of the culture of the world. How many have seen whole denominations become a part of the culture of the world? They've lost their power. <laughs> you're no longer salt. You're no longer light but a part of a culture without true faith, no spiritual authority or power, no longer bearing fruit. That's what we see in America. But that ain't the way God intended it to be. And that ain't the way it is with us. Look at somebody say, it ain't the way it is with me. <laughs> You're looking at somebody Holy Ghost feel. Come on now. Got the power of God? Come on now. Got Jesus inside of me. It becomes a den of thieves. They steal the effects of faith. They steal the relationship with the Creator. God wants us, God wants to move. The churches, the denominations in America back what God purposed them to be. Come on now. We got people that once had faith, once had power, once had authority. Now they're lining up with evil people, aligning themselves with evil, evil people calling good evil 
and evil good. When anything loses its purpose, it loses its identity. This is the temple of God here. Supposed to be affecting everybody. I want to show you its purpose. I want to show you its power. I want to show you its authority. I want to show you the love that it had for Jesus, that it had for the Father, that it had for Jehovah. Look at 2 Chronicles 5. This is the purpose that it had lost. That's why we got people today that don't believe in the power of God. (laughs) They don't believe that Jesus can touch you. They got a form. They've lost their identity. They have no more power. They have no more authority. They have no more faith. How many believe we got power over the devils? Come on now. He said you shall cast out devils in my name. How many places do you find casting out devils? They've lost their identity. I've been run out of prisons. You say somebody get run out of prison? Yeah, I've been run out of prisons for casting out devils and getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I was, we was in a prison one night, and, Jean- and Jeanette, not out here, but she'll tell you I was preaching, and this guy was trying to cast a spell on me while I was preaching. It was in a, uh, it, it was in a, a prison with, uh, uh, what do you call it, maximum security prison. He was by there going. He was in witchcraft. I called him up here and prayed for him. I said, come out of him, devil. His mind was so warped. I said, you're free now. He said, does that mean I can go home? I said, no, man. You can't get out of these bars. (laughs) You don't try to cast a devil on somebody that's born again, spirit filled. Come on now. Cast out devils. We've been thrown out of prisons for casting out devils and seeing people baptized in the Holy Spirit. This certain prison that I'm talking about, we went in and revival started. Well, the chaplain, he didn't believe in revival because the people got witnessing on the yard to the Muslims and they, and they almost had some conflict. And he put us out of the prison and said we'd never come back. Because it got revival. I think he lost his purpose, don't you? I think he lost his identity. He didn't know who he was. Glory to God. So Vail D. Cooper carried me back in there because he was a chaplain there, one of the chaplains. Same thing happened again. Revival broke out. <laughs> On the yard, man. On the yard. You let Jesus loose, he going to tear something up. He going to throw something over. He going to turn some some kind of something. He going to turn it upside down. The guy found out we was in there again. He threw us out again. He said he'll never come back this time. Two weeks later, he had to retire. He got sick. You don't touch the anointing. Don't mess with it. Let it flow. We was in CC. Well, he don't tell what he said. We was in Columbia. Revival broke out in the prison. These inmates was having prayer meeting on Friday night, and it was praying so loud it disturbed the people. And so they got rid of the Southern Baptist chaplain who was a friend of ours. Jeanette and he sang. They sang duets together. He was the sweetest man you ever seen. He just let us pray for people. Just, I mean, he knew it was real. He just let us pray for these people. And, and, and revival hit that place. And they took the chaplain and sent him to another institution. 
took the piano out. <laughs> you got to have music when the Holy Ghost is moving. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you you don't have to have it. You 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 know, but it's good to have it. How many know that? It just it, it, you get to singing and praising God. God comes down, begins to bring people under conviction that's lost, begins to heal people. Hallelujah! That's sick begins to begins to deliver people that are bound. I mean, it, 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 you just presence of God comes, anything can happen. So that's what we was doing. All those inmates down there, they, they we just loved on them. We sweated on each other, and 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 they just packed a place out. I mean, it was it was awesome what God was doing. Two, three time murderers, and and they, and they, and they, and they saved and full of the Holy Ghost and having prayer meetings. So he got a chapel in there and took the piano out. And then this guy got back there when we was worshiping God and, and, this, and this friend, you know, he was, he was an inmate, but he was just shaking that tambourine and, and the chaplain looked at me and he said, go tell him to stop that and take it away from him. I said, if you want him to stop it, you go tell him. I ain't messing with him. Well, they run us out of there. I'm going to tell you, Denominations have lost their identity. Used to, you couldn't tell the difference between Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterians. Come on now. <laughs> they knew how to pray and they knew how to get a hold of God. They knew the purpose that they were here for. That was to pray the kingdom down, to preach the kingdom down, and to worship the kingdom down. Glory to God. We're in this world, but we're not a part of it. Hallelujah. Woo, yes. Somebody say glory to God. Yes. This is the way God intended this, this thing that had lost its identity and Jesus cursed. How many know Jesus curses? He cursed this thing. He said, it will never bear fruit again. It died from the roots. Why? Because the roots got rotten. Jesus said that. It wasn't producing faith. It wasn't producing power. People were bound up. Jesus come to loose them up. Look at somebody say, loose them up. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't want to get loose. I don't want all this stuff. Look at this uh Second Chronicles five. Let's look at this. Second Chronicles five. Now this is when Solomon we know this was this was um uh, this temple here was burned by Nebuchadnezzar. It was built again by Zerubbabel. Nehemiah built the walls, Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple. Ezra was involved in this and getting the law established in this place again. And, and then Herod come along and remodeled this place. It never did look like it did when Solomon built it. But this is the purpose. This is what God intended to happen. Look at verse 11. Look at somebody say, when you lose your purpose, you lose your identity. I don't want to connect up with the culture of the world. I want the culture of, of, the, of the kingdom of God, don't you? You say, what is culture? It's the way you do things. That's real complicated, ain't it? <laughs> it's the way you do things. God's, God's culture, God's kingdom culture. Look at this. And it came to pass when the priest was come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified. I mean, they were ready, man. Wouldn't it be good if everybody come in the house of God like it was tonight and this morning? Everybody done sanctified themselves. What are you talking about sanctified? They set themselves aside to worship God. Come on now. To hear the things of God. They were ready. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready. I'm ready for revival. <laughs> you take some of these people going to need a resurrection. 
is done past revival. <laughs> they're so dead, they're done stinking. They've done been dead four days, you know. They've been dead long. <laughs> I've went in some places you couldn't preach down nothing. They wouldn't let you. They done lost their purpose. They thought their purpose was just to come in and meet every day and, and everybody leave the same. Everybody come in the same, leave the same, and stay the same. I, I want to come in and go out different, don't you? I want to come in empty and go out full. Hallelujah. You say, what you preaching? I was preaching what I was going to preach this morning. Because the Lord gave it to me at 5 o'clock this morning. But I'm back there all excited about wanting to talk about it. And the Lord said, hey, I got something else I want to do. I want to touch some people need touching. And that's what he did this morning. Ain't no way to give out no Holy Ghost be a bulletin. Because <laughs> he's going to do what he wants to do when you get here. Come on now. Look at somebody and say, this is his time. It's his timing. He does what he wants to do. When we give an altar call, it's his altar call. It ain't mine. It ain't, I ain't got to call up Nashville and say, hey, can we do this now? No. Heaven going to tell you what to do. Come on now. I've seen more dead Pentecostal people. I've seen dead Pentecostal people. Oh, Lord, they stink. <laughs> they done lost their purpose. They ain't got no praise. They ain't got no worship. Come on now. They done dried up on the vine and died. Better wake up. You better wake up because God going to raise you up. God going to pour his spirit out on you. Hallelujah. I don't want, I don't want, I want relationship. I don't want religion. Used to old time religion meant something. They're saying, I got that old time religion. And it really meant something, didn't it, Melissa? It really meant something. Because I know a man at Piedmont, when he got, he, he, they said he got religion. He went to revival. He was a nightclub owner, a beer joint owner, and he went up there to the Baptist church where they having revival, and he got saved. And you know what they said? He got religion. He must have got something because he closed his beer joint down. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> I tell you, thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody. Say, I got something. Oh, I ain't, got, I, ain't, I ain't got religion. I got something. I got purpose. God's got a purpose for me. People look at me and they say, who are you? I say, I'm somebody in Christ. You say, well, how, God, how could God use you? Well, I wondered that myself, but he's sure doing it. Look at somebody. So I wondered that myself, but he's sure doing it. I ain't too smart, but I know God. Hallelujah. I got the availability in this book right here to find out anything I need to know about life and godliness. Hallelujah. God has given it to me pertaining to life. Woo! He's given me everything I need. In him, I live and move and have my being. Hallelujah. I know my Redeemer lives, and I know my assignment. I know what he called me to do, and I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. I refuse to lose my identity, my purpose. I'm going on with Jesus. Whoa, glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. He said, he, it says, in, and the priests were present, were sanctified. Now you say, well, that's with a priest. How many know that God has a kingdom of priests now? A royal priesthood. Come on now. Who are worshiping God in the spirit. In the spirit. Not under the law, but in the spirit. Hallelujah. The law killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Hallelujah. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
in Jesus. My God. Look at somebody and say, I ain't lost my identity. I know who I am in Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. You think it's all bad. Listen, we got this, we had this friend that was a chaplain in the federal prison. He was a Methodist guy. He brought us to every prison he 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 moved to. He 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 met us in Atlanta right after they torched the prison. The Cuban people, the boat people were in in Atlanta. We went in there about two weeks before the riot. Those people were so wonderful. They brought my wife, my daughter, my mama. They brought them flowers. They were so kind. Went in there with an interpreter. And, and our friend was the first time we met him. And he said, I ain't gonna like them people. But he got to be one of our best friends. We were ministering there two weeks before, the, before they torched that prison. How many remember when they torched the prison? I don't know. Y'all don't remember. How many remember the boat people? Castro emptied his jails in his insane asylum when Carter was in office, and he sent them to America, and we took them, and we locked them up. They were, they were so, I, I tell you, I know they were violent criminals in it because they, they torched the prison, but a lot of those guys, they were so sweet, you would not believe it. We had over 100 in a room, and I was preaching with an interpreter, and I gave an altar call, and those people came to the altar, and they were weeping. They wet the carpet with their tears. They knew something was about to happen. They took the head chaplain hostage. These other people did. These people didn't. These people, they called, they called me father. Why did they call you father? Because they had a Catholic background. They got born again. I didn't rebuke them for calling me father. You say, well, you know what I'm supposed to do. They don't understand that. They just know that you represent God. You understand that. I know I'm not a priest in, the, in that sense. I'm a priest in holy priesthood. <laughs> Come on now. All of us are. We're born again. And, 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 and they, one of them got a hold of my knees with both of his hands. He, he was shaking and sobbing. I thought he was going to crush my knees, Steve. I thought he was going to crush me. He was holding on so hard. He was crying like a baby. God, I felt so, I felt so much compassion for these people. About two weeks later, they took the guy, one of the guys hostage, and they, the, the, the chaplain, head chaplain, Mabry, who was a wonderful guy, he was Presbyterian. You say, did he speak in tongues? No, he didn't, but he was saved, and he had to fruit of the Spirit, and I loved that guy, didn't we, Jeanette? We loved him. We'd go to McDonald's and eat with him. You say, well, I thought you didn't have nothing to do with people who wasn't Pentecost. You don't know what you're talking about. I got friends everywhere. Hallelujah. Don't you get that pride on you and stiff neck and think you got something and, and they ain't got nothing. Listen, if they see that on you, they never want what you got. Come on now. They're going to heaven. They're brother or sister in the Lord. So we go eat with him. Well, it went along, you know, with our friend... Uh, Larry, he transferred to Butner, North Carolina. Butner, North Carolina is where they carried the people that were mentally ill, and they also had other inmates there. And you'd be preaching, and, 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 and they'd get up and go out and take their medicine, and a lot of them was just messed up in their minds. But everywhere Larry went, he, he carried us. And he would tell us, this is a Methodist man, he would tell us, do you think, I said, what you talking about, Larry? The Pentecostal. That's what I brought you up here for. Tell them about Pentecost. Tell them what you talk about. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, people can see the glory of God on people that have really loved Jesus and want to be full of him. Look at somebody and say, I want to be full of him. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't got all I want. I ain't got all I need. I ain't got all I'm going to get. I'm going to get more of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going, when I get him, he's going to get more of me. Hallelujah. I don't lose my purpose. 
and lose my identity? Go back to dryness? No. I don't want to go back to dryness. <laughs> I want to fire. The fire. That's why I run everywhere I can when we can. We used to do it and I'll still do it. You say you chase revivals. No, I chase the Holy Ghost. If there's a revival somewhere, T.L. Lowry's laying hands on somebody or somebody laying hands on somebody, I'm going to be there. You say, why? Because I want more. I want to be able to help people more. This is what it's all about. This is why God touches us, that we may touch others. It not only strengthens us, but we have the power and the authority to help others. I don't know whether you know it or not, but there's a dying world out there right now. There are people that are so messed up, they don't know which way to go. And then they, and they go to some of these peop, places that have lost their identity and lost their purpose, and they send them to Marshall Pickens to get more drugs. And they give them counselors that's messed up themselves. They want to help and they try to help and they really want to help, but they're dealing mind to mind when you've got to deal spirit to spirit. You've got to cast something out before God can get them free. You've got to pray for them. You've got to pray some power down on them. You can't deal with spiritual minds with spiritual problems with the mind. I had a cousin, Jeanette knows it. He was a humanist. He was retired out of the Navy. Ain't got nothing to do with him being a humanist. He didn't believe in God. He thought man was God. <laughs> we prayed for that boy. He, he was a psychologist at, at, at the mental hospital. He tried to help people. He was raised in a broken home and he had broken. He had problems and he wanted to help people. But he wasn't saved. How many, if you ever needed to go to get counseling, you want somebody that's been touched by God? Come on now. So this guy, he got saved. He come over and laid down on our couch and talked to us about his problems. I love the man. We loved him. He messed around and got filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he started praying for his patience. Come on now. And he started helping him when he got his seeing that, 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 that the medication, even though it may help him for a while, was not the answer. He started laying hands on him and praying for him. He's in heaven right now. God had a purpose for him right in the middle of hurting people. I want to tell you, when you deal with hurting people, you need the presence and the power of God because you're not enough, but he's more than enough. Hallelujah. Woo! Let me give you the rest of this before you go to sleep on me. Is this helping anybody? Slap somebody and say, I ain't, leaving. I ain't losing my identity. I ain't losing my purpose. God put me here to help people. keep losing my place <laughs> listen to this also the Levites which were the singers everybody say the singers say the singers has got something to do with this did you notice the anointing increase in here a while ago when we kept singing and worshiping sometimes you don't have to do that but sometimes you have to I've, you feel the Holy Spirit pulling on you I, pulling on you pulling on you pulling on you and the Levites, which were the singers, and all of the Aesop, they wrote. The Aesop wrote songs and and song later, and of Haman of Jephthah, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen. That's the righteousness represents the righteousness which we know is Christ. This is Old Testament, having cymbals and psalteries, which were string in, instruments and harps, and stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests. Sounding with trumpets. That's a strange number. 
That's a strange, a strange number, 120. 120. <laughs> How many was in the upper room? Look at somebody say duplicate. God duplicates. <laughs> I needed to get refilled the other night. God duplicated me. He gave me something he'd already done before. Hallelujah. This is 120. There was 120 in the upper room. And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. They were in one accord. Man, to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they had lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. That then the house, the house was what? What did, what, what, what did he do? How, what did, he, did Jesus, when Jesus came in, the, he went in the temple, he looked, none of this stuff wasn't going on. He went in there, he looked around. He didn't see nobody in there praising God. He didn't see nobody in there. He, did, yeah. <laughs> he didn't see no priest sanctified. He didn't see that. He saw, all he saw was a culture just like the world's culture. That's what he saw. He cursed that thing. Said it never bear fruit again. Y'all give me a minute. And he praised the Lord, said, for he is good. Somebody say, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Why are you here tonight? Oh, I'm here because I was good. I'm here because I've been good all my life. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm, I just come in. God said, you're so good. Come on in. I watched you. No, honey, you're here because of mercy. Am I telling the truth? Mercy rewrote my life. <laughs> mercy stands in front of judgment and says no. No. Look at the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mercy. I'm here because of mercy. He said, for he is good. Point to say, for he is good. Hallelujah. And then the house was filled. Was the house filled when Jesus came and looked at all the money changers and all that stuff? No, they had lost their identity. They had lost their purpose. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, we ought to be able to walk in here when there ain't nobody in here during the week, when there ain't nothing going on in here, and we ought to be saying, we ought to be able to say, Jesus, I love you, and feel the presence of God. Because this is a sanctified house. Glory to God. Set apart for the master's service. It has a purpose, and I have a purpose. Hallelujah. They fill with a cloud over the house of the Lord. This is God's plan so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. People say, well, what is this falling out stuff? I don't understand that falling out stuff. They, people tell me that all the time. I mean, I see people all the time. They don't understand what I'm, I know what they're talking about. God, I, just didn't, I didn't understand it either. I said, what, 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 what the fuck falling out for? And then one night I went up and got in prayer and I went, boo. <laughs> my feet, my legs were rubbery and I couldn't stand up. It was the glory of God come down on the flesh. And the flesh can't stand when the glory comes down. The flesh gives or it staggers or it grabs a hold of something because it's going to move you. It's going to come on you. It's going to take you down. I pray for people. Had people come in and know what I was doing. They said, oh, that person, I saw them when they fainted. You prayed for them and they fainted. No, they didn't faint. They fell under the power of God. How many has ever felt the power of God? Raise your hand and say, yeah. I'm into that culture. <laughs> so when the priest could not stand up to men by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. I want you to look here. And um, I could take you to Acts. I'm not going to take you there. But go to 
2 Chronicles 7. Look at something and say, I'm not going to lose my purpose. I'm going to keep my house filled with the glory. The glory of God. Hallelujah. It ain't Ichabod. Look at somebody say, ain't Ichabod. Ichabod was saying to me, the glory departed. No, not here. The glory has come. We are changed from glory to glory. You can't get in the presence of God and stay the same. I've been in, I've been in churches. Now listen, I know y'all ain't this way. I know y'all got more going for you than I do. I know that. I know that. You want to tell me. You ain't got to tell me. I ain't got to tell you. I've come in church before depressed. I bet y'all ain't. I've come in church before beat up. Done been in warfare. Knew I was winning but felt like I was losing. <laughs> ain't none of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all too. Y'all got too much faith for that. I mean, <laughs> I've come in like that before. How many has ever come in like that before? Some honest people here. I've come in here before knowing I had friends and felt like I didn't have a friend in the world. Y'all ever been there? You get in the presence of God, the glory of God comes and sits down in this place or anywhere you are. New Orleans, wherever you at, huh? Woo! What did that woman? Surely blown. She bought who? Whatever it is. <laughs> That's what the Cajuns sing there. I love the Cajun. I love it. I love that song. I don't know what it means. It means something about a woman. But <laughs> you can sing anywhere. Anywhere. The presence of God comes down. Lifts the burden off of you. Come on now. You come in with a smile and somebody say, how are you? And you say, blessed and highly favored. But inside you feel like, mmm. <laughs> yeah. And you come and get in the presence of God. Come on now. And you go out a different person. You got strength, spiritual strength, physical strength, Hallelujah. And you go out and your troubles have then been washed off of you. You may still be facing the same thing tomorrow, but you're reacting different because you have been in the presence of the glory of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Your culture has changed from defeat to victory. You knew in the spirit you had the victory, but in your emotions you didn't until God touched you. And strengthened you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read the rest of this. We'll go. I hate people lie to me. Don't you? You say, How? you know that they got troubles. You know they got troubles. And you're trying to pray for them. And they act like they offended because you're trying to pray for them. You ever run into that? I have. That's pride. I can still be claiming the victory, but go ahead and pray for me. I need another surge. I need some more glory on me. Hallelujah. I'm going to face devils tomorrow. And I want some power on me. Hallelujah. Is this happening to anybody? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <coughs> I tell you, that little Ang A Angie, she, she went through pure hell during her life. And God molded her and made her to help other people in the areas that she talked about this morning. God's turn, God will turn your pain into help for somebody else. How many has ever been through something and God used it later when you got through it to help somebody else? 
And because you went through it, you had so much compassion for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read this. We gotta, I know we got to go. Lord, I'm in there. It's when you say go, but I'm just, uh, we, it's 8.30. It's 7.30 in Dallas. It's 6.30 in Los Angeles, I think. Woo! I just fly. 5.30. Look at somebody say, the Lord fixing to touch you again before you get out of here. Strength is fixing to come into you. Strength is fixing to come into you. Strength is fixing to come into you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many come in here depressed today? Raise your hand if you did. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want I want you to be honest now. Now, you know, I want you to be honest. I ain't, I ain't one of these evangelists that, uh, I'm a pastor, excuse me. I was evangelist one time. I had a revival lasted 10 nights. I got 1,000 people saved. It was only a hundred every night, the same hundred. I got them saved every night. <laughs> How many feels better? Glory to God. Why? You know why? Because the Lord has touched you in this place. Put your hand on your heart and say, He just loves me. I don't know why He loves me like He does. He just loves me. <laughs> He's, he knew he knew what I was like when he called me up. He called me up and he said, "Man, I can." He said, "He said to me, he said I can make something out of you for my kingdom." I said, "Out of me? You can you can make something out of me? People tried to make something. I can, I've tried myself." He said, "I can do it. If you let me get in your house, if you get if you let me get in there where you." where you live, where your spirit is. He said, I'll come and I, I'll decorate that place like you've never seen. He said, I'm the master interior decorator. Woo! Hallelujah. He's dressed me up so much, sometimes my relatives don't even know who I am. Look at somebody. Say, when he changed the inside, it had some kind of effect uh, even on the outside. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm talking about God that created the heavens and the earth. I'm talking about God that can change a life. It can change a culture. It can change a family. It can change a nation. He can change it. Hallelujah. Let me read this. Let me say, he better not lie to me this time. Paul used to lie to people. He said, finally, in closing. He said that one time. He preached all night. A man fell out the window and died. He preached so long, the man went to sleep and fell out the window, and Paul had to go down there and raise him from the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> you ever read it? Paul said, and finally, brethren, and he goes on and on and on and on. He finally got in a place that he got so close to God, he called it his gospel. He read the Bible. He said, and my gospel. It wasn't Paul's gospel, but it was. He was telling the good story, the good news. He had that sign. Read this. Look at somebody say, you need to read this. Look at this. 2 Chronicles 7. Now he said, now listen, this is key. He said what? Jesus said, this is supposed to be the house of prayer for just the Jews. Ain't what he said, is it? He said, for all nations, this should supposed to be the house of prayer for all nations. All nations. Look at this right here. And when Solomon had made the end of praying, he dedicated that place. The fire came down. 
the fire came down from heaven. That's what it says. The fire came down. Wait till you see the fire. Look at somebody and say, wait till you see the fire. You ain't seen the fire yet. But this can happen. My wife was in, we was in a revival one time in Veldy Cooper's church. I was still working a job. We was down there in revival. And she always wanted to play the piano. And, and, and they couldn't, you know, when she was raised up, she had brothers and sisters that couldn't afford to send her to get a piano lesson. And we was down there, and the band was down there. We knew some of the band, and they was down there. But they, they didn't really, you know, know us close, but they was from the church my mother went to. And, and we was having revival, and the spirit got to moving. There was two women there going to commit suicide. Do you know they got delivered? They had to carry them out drunk. You say, what you talking about? The Holy Ghost hit them, and they were so drunk, they couldn't get their self off, off the floor. They had to literally carry them out and carry them home, and they was delivered from that oppressive spirit that was trying to get them to commit suicide. I'm telling you, when the fire falls, when the Holy Ghost falls, anything can happen, hallelujah. Bondages burn off. God touches people. So Jeanette, she just eased over there and they was playing and the piano player went to the bathroom or something. I don't know what happened to her. Huh? She didn't show up. Okay. Every other kind of musician showed up. You know what Jeanette did? She went over and sat down on the piano stool. She sound like Melissa. She was playing that thing. Lord, I thought, I didn't know Melissa then. I thought Jimmy Swaggart's over there. <laughs> Honest, I did. She was playing that thing. She played every number they played. And I'm talking about she played it, man. We come in there the next night to preach, and that band said, come over here. I told Jeanette, come over here. Sit down on the piano. You're going to play with us tonight. She couldn't hit a lick. <laughs> she couldn't play nothing. I wish I could say God gave her a gift and she kept it, but it was an anointing for that night. You understand what I'm saying? God can do some things. I've heard, and this is from Pentecostal people, where God was moving in a church and the piano player fell off the piano and fell under the power of God. You see it right here where they, they couldn't stand to the minister. They were slain in the spirit, those priests were, praising God. When the glory come, they were slain in the spirit. And I have heard this from Pentecostal people where a woman fell off the piano and the piano kept playing. You say that's impossible. You say you ever seen that? No, but I sure would like to. Tonight would be okay, Lord. <laughs> I'd take a guitar, a piano, you know, drums, anything, play anything. God can do it. Let me read you this. I keep losing my place. I'm trying to go. When Solomon had made the end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house because of the glory of God had filled the Lord's house. Whose house? When the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised God. You know what the effect has when a people pray down the glory of God and worship down the glory of God? Other people see it and they get jealous. They say, I got to have some of this. And their life begins to change. Revival comes. I heard Kenneth Copeland tell about a meeting that they had one time and he was praying for the fire to fall. And they were in there praising God and the fire trucks came. And they thought they come busting in the door and they said, where's the fire? They said, what you talking about? They said, well, we see a fire all over the top of this building. And it was a fire that would not consume. Come on now. It was the glory of God. Have you ever seen it? No, but I, 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 I sure hope I see it. I sure hope. I believe for it. I do because I want to see it because when that kind of glory comes, revival going to break out all over the place. Whew. I mean, we don't need revival in America, do we? 
I mean, you know, we, we, don't, we don't need revival in America, do we? Everybody else needs it but America. No, America needs revival. I want revival. I want the fire to fall. Hallelujah. I want the fire to fall on you because God loves you. You say, how could God love me? I've been a witch doctor. I tell you what, the great physician will touch you and take the witch out of your doctor. Hallelujah! He will deliver you from that spirit of witchcraft right now. Come out of him in Jesus' name. How many is there here that is? I've heard of witch doctors come to meetings to cast spells and stop the meetings in Africa. And the witch doctors get saved. We were in the Dominican Republic. I'm trying to close. We were in the Dominican Republic. We was in a place called La Calada. We had we had went in that area and 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 and, and preached in it. And it was seventy people saved and baptized in the river. We bought a building, and, and, and for $250, we had a church. We had people baptized. Hallelujah. Y'all remember it. You and Jim. Hallelujah. Rick, Jeanette, y'all remember it. Huh? That was El Capal. Yeah, El Capal. Okay. The river changed, and so the other side of that river is where we got that church built. I'm trying to close. I'm trying to close. I got to preaching on me. I got to preach. I got to preach a minute. I got to get home. I get home and I want to be preaching all night. Hallelujah. And so, woo, look at somebody say, Holy Spirit, fill me. God. So we, we they, they, they moved to church across there. And, 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 and they told us that, we went back there another time. This is years later. And they said, we got you a meeting. Robert said, you got you a meeting in this church, this new church. And, 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 and somebody built a new church and said, we got you a meeting in this church. Well, I was going to preach, and, and, and it was just a bunch of kids in there. And the Lord gave me the madman of Gadara to preach on Mark chapter 5, the madman of Gadara. How many remember that message? Well, the man had 2,000 demons. I, tell, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You, got, you know, there's kids in here, maybe a mom or two. The kids in there. And I'm preaching about the madman of Gadara. And I'm saying while I'm preaching, Lord, I don't understand this. You don't have to understand it. All you got to do is obey. Y'all remember it? I preached it on that. And this, 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 this person came in and sat down. Sit down beside Ricky, I think. It was a she that looked like a he. You understand? It had lost its identity. That person had lost their identity. The devil can do a number on anybody. Come on now. It lost its identity. I, I felt compassion for her. And I preached on the madman of Gadara. We gave an altar call. That woman came. She hadn't spoken in two years. She had not spoken a word in two years. She had been to the witch doctor. And the witch doctor had in that village had cast a spell on her. And she hadn't talked for two years. She was in perversion and, and couldn't talk. This bunch of people flogged her like a bunch of hens. They lit it on her and started praying for her and started rebuking devils. We prayed for that woman and we'd get tired and we'd back off and two or three more would step up. That's what you got to do. You wear them. If, 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 if that devil's so strong, he ain't coming out instantly, and I've seen him come out instantly, but I've seen it take time. Don't wear yourself out. That devil will try to wear you out. So we'd switch back and forth. That woman started talking again. God delivered her in that church house, hallelujah. Delivered her. 
We was in our church in Lacalada. This man had come in, this young boy had come in. He had never spoken. Am I, am I right on that? Help me. He had never talked. He had never spoken. And he was in the meeting. And we got to praying for him and he got to crying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He couldn't talk good. But he got to talking. Hallelujah. I tell you, there's some fire in Jesus. There's some fire in the Holy Ghost. We're going to see more than we've ever seen in our life. And I want to see it because I want to see lives changed. Just people running in off the street. You say, have you seen that happen? I've seen it happen in the prison where a man busted off the basketball court, busted the back doors open where we were preaching, interrupted our meeting. How dare him? You're out of order. No. I jumped on that joker. You remember it? I, had a, I was telling that devil to come out of him. That devil was acting up. It was manifesting. I had, my, I had, a, I had a, a, a hold on him from the back. I had that joker. I had a hold on him. I said, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Interrupted my preaching. I'm going to get this devil out. He ain't coming and I'm stopping this service. Come on now. He flipped me, didn't he? Flipped me over his head. Completely free of him. I don't know how he did it. At the same time, he jumped on his feet and started dancing and shouting and saying, Jesus, set me free. Jesus, set me free. Hallelujah. I said, at least he knows who did it. Amen. Let me read this. We go. I'm on my glasses. I got them on. <laughs> how many believe there's power in Jesus? So look at somebody and say, I'm not losing my identity. I'm not going to lose my purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what this purpose is. I, I don't know why I didn't lose this. He said, and the priest could not enter into the house because the glory of God filled the Lord's house. And when all the children saw how the, when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord pump, 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 upon the house, they bowed themselves <laughs> with their faces to the ground. I saw Betty do that a while ago. I saw Carrie up here upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good, for his mercy. Put your hand on your heart and say, his mercy touched me. His mercy touched me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we come up here and pray for a revival? Can we come up here? Can we just come up here and grab hands? Hallelujah. And say, Lord, fill us all. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. We, 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 we love you so much. How many would just, we love you so much. We, we, we do from the bottom of our heart. We're so thankful. We, we, we're so thankful that you're watching these services. We, you may or may not understand everything that's going on, but I'm going to tell you, you can find it in the Word. And you will find a God that loves you, that died for you, that will forgive you. He will come into your heart and reside there. And you can be continually filled with Him. Filled and filled and filled and baptized. And, and God will just touch you and minister to you and love on you and change you from glory to glory. So I pray tonight, if you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. Just say that with me. I believe you're the Son of God. You're virgin-born Son of God. You died for my sins. You resurrected the third day. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. I want to enter into the kingdom of God right now, into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. I am saved by the mercy and grace of God. Just say that. I am saved by the grace and the mercy of God. Continue to watch us if you will. We won't tell you anything that's wrong because we preach the Bible. We preach the Bible. We, don't, we wouldn't dare do that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We love you and God bless you. Amen. Let's give him a hand.
Hallelujah. Can you